about that some. Now we're trying to go from the rotational concept to the linear concept. So you use the right equation. This is the equation that links translation and rotation. And you remember that it's your job to put in the sign. So that's again good. Most students don't remember that. Well, we know from our common sense, or do we? Why did we put in this negative sign here? Because we know that uh, Well, I think because we knew that they had to be that if we decided that angular acceleration was positive in a clockwise direction, right? That that's opposite of because we're saying that the positive direction for Acceleration is upward, so I just thought that they would be opposite. Okay. No. So I'm not sure if I followed on that, that train of thought, but here's the way to think about it. Okay. Um, we know that we are going to be rotating counterclockwise, and based on our decisions, that's a negative direction. Right. Now, how about translation? Um, is the acceleration going to be up or down? We just know that from common sense. Mm -hmm. We know that if we're rotating in this direction, the arm is going to be moving up. And is that going to be positive or negative? Positive. Just based on the decisions we made. That's what I was so will A and alpha have the same sign or opposite signs? Um, They'll have opposite signs. Opposite sign. So you were right and I was wrong. All right, you were right all along. What you were saying must have been right. So you're right. You do have to put this negative sign in here. You have to put the negative sign in to show that A and alpha will end up with opposite signs. Um, a and alpha, A is not going to end up negative, but it will end up with the opposite sign to alpha. So you were right. I wasn't thinking about that clearly. Uh, but then you have to be very careful when you plug in alpha to plug in the full negative 500. So the two negatives cancel. But you did that. So you were actually doing good. Was, I was the one making the mistake. Oh, no. Um, that was good. I think you might have made another mistake. So um, what's the question asking us for? Um, the acceleration. Whose acceleration? Oh, of the hand. Right. Ah, let's see. Okay, so it's a different R value. That's right. So I think at first you were plugging in point. Uh, you were plugging in point one five because you were finding the distance to the center of the arm. But what should we plug in for R? But in the diagram, they specifically label that the hand is over here. Yeah. So um, its distance is carefully to see what they're asking you for. Remember that the whole reason we need this equation is that different points on this object are going to have different translational accelerations. They all have the same alpha. They're all rotating at negative 500 radians per second squared, but these over here are going to have small translational motions and these are going to have large translational motions. Of course, the pivot is not translating at all. So you have to specify which point you're, who's, which point you're trying to find the A for. Well, here the question specified the hand. So we should use the entire length, which is 0.3. Why did we use what was halfway along last time? Well, notice that one thing we never needed for this problem was net force y, at least for, this, for the last few parts. We didn't need this here. But suppose that we were going to have to use this equation. 
Well, if we were going to use net force y, we would have a problem. We'd have to say to ourselves, gee, different parts of the arm are going to have different accelerations. Well, which point should you focus on for Newton's second law? Whose acceleration should you focus on when you? That's right. So probably we should have written that from the start. We should have made a note to ourselves that we're focusing on the acceleration of the center of mass. That didn't matter earlier when all the accelerations were zero. But here when they're non-zero, we have to show that we're focusing on the center of mass. So if you were trying to find this acceleration, then you would use 0.15 as the distance, because it is a distance of 0.15. That's how we did the previous problem. We never actually had to use this equation to solve this problem, so we never actually had to use the 0.15. We just uh, had to ask, answer a question about the hand, which happened to be what they were asking us about. Um, when would we need this? Well, the thing they didn't ask us for is they didn't ask us for um, the hinge force, which they could have. That was what they asked us in the previous problem. If they had asked us for the hinge force, well, we can't do that by focusing on torque, because the hinge force doesn't put in a torque. So if they were asking for the hinge force, then we would have to use this equation. And then we would have to find the acceleration of the center of mass using this equation and putting in 0.15 for the distance. Well, those two questions are a really good review of the ideas behind uh, statics and dynamics and rotation. And uh, I think you're already way ahead of most students that are covering this. Most students don't know to use this equation and they don't know how to put in the signs. Okay. Uh, but even so, you can see there's lots of ins and outs. Yeah. <laughs> so I would definitely recommend just do these two questions over again before you do new questions do you to think make sure. Right. Well, first of all, you should do them over, and yes, you, you, they should be easy for you. And if they're not easy, you have to keep doing them over until they are easy, yeah. but that shouldn't be the end of your studies. Obviously, then you should go on and do other statics and dynamics problems, but there's no point going on to new problems unless you know you can get the old problems right. right. So all I'm saying is don't go on to new problems unless you know you can get the old problems right. And then maybe again, um, I don't remember what your test is. Next Tuesday. Well, then maybe if you redo these right away, maybe on Monday you'd go back and redo them again when they might have slipped your memory a little bit. But these really cover most of the main issues that could come up here. And even though you've just seen these, you might find yourself falling into what, uh, some traps along the way. So it's good to go back and redo them. Okay. Did that clarify the, the, the questions that you had about uh, the hinge force yeah. and torques? Okay. These videos are offered on a pay what you like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.